It's Madame Yasmin where we glow more every day. Today we're making some cold process soap just like these ones here. Cold process soaps are much better for the skin because they retain a lot more of the ingredient nutrients like the aloe vera that we'll be putting in today. If you already watch this channel, you know I love aloe vera. I'll be teaching you how to add aloe vera to your soap today. First, we're going to measure out our ingredients. Set your scale and your container before you start measuring. And if you want to learn how, please watch my other videos on soap making. Now, we are measuring out the ice. Using ice instead of water, as I've showed you in previous videos so that your caustic soda won't heat up the solution too fast so that was 260 grams of ice now i've measured out the caustic soda aka lye we have about 157 grams of the lye and uh, mind you i haven't put all the water content into the uh, formula yet because we're adding aloe vera and aloe vera is part of the water component so i've used only a third of the water component for the aloe vera and this is two thirds of the water component which i'm using to mix the lye so we have 260 grams of water and 157 grams of lye but then i'm still going to add another 120 grams of the water component which is the aloe vera i'm going to set that aside now while i prepare the aloe vera we're going to slice off the edges of the aloe vera, that's the spikes on the side. Of course, after we've washed the aloe vera thoroughly, I'm cutting off the thin side of the aloe vera and keeping the side that holds most of the aloe vera gel. I'm going to extract the aloe vera gel using a knife. You can use a spoon and watch previous videos to see how I extract the aloe vera gel. Like I said earlier, the aloe vera is part of the water content of our formula. So I've discounted the water, that is the ice, and I'm using that difference to measure the aloe vera. We're using 120 grams of aloe vera. You can see how watery it has become after we blend it. Additives like aloe vera are usually used at the end of the soap making process when your soap is at trace. And that is why we separate the aloe vera from the lye solution so that it doesn't burn out all the nutrients before you put it into the soap. I'm going to start measuring out what makes the oil component of my formula now. I'm starting with coconut oil, which is going to make up the highest percentage of oils that I'm using in this formula. I'm using 600 grams of coconut oil. I'm going to be using also some palm kernel oil and some baobab oil. So I've got my 600 grams of coconut oil pretty much measured out here. I'm going to use this bowl, a safe, thick plastic bowl for mixing my soap. I'm adding the coconut oil in and after that I'm going to go ahead and measure some palm kernel oil. The palm kernel oil is quite thick. It's a cold morning here in the mountains. And I just measured out about 200 grams of palm kernel oil that we're going to be using in our formula. Baobab oil is a softer oil, so it will bring some softness to the hard oils that we're using as coconut and palm kernel oil are hard oils. I'm just using about 150 grams of the baobab oil. And I have added extra oil to this formula to make our soap more moisturizing. So I've added the palm kernel oil to the mix and also added the baobab oil. I'm just mixing my lye in again just to make sure that there are no particles floating about. We're leaving the star of the show aloe vera until later. So now we have our oils all together in our bowl. I also have my lye solution ready to be mixed in. I'm mixing the oils together properly before I start adding the lye solution. Always make sure to add your caustic soda water solution to the oil and not the other way around. So you have to pour your lye solution into the oil solution and not the other way around. At this point, I'm mixing the soap with the stick blender giving short bursts of the stick blender and sometimes just mixing with my hand because if you go too quickly, you might get the soap really thick really quickly. 
Now, trace is when the soap gets quite thick and is ready to be poured into the mold. Usually when you lift your stick blender, you'll notice patterns being formed on top of the soap. Once we're sure our soap is well mixed and our trays, we can then begin to add our colors, our fragrances, essential oils, additives, whatever you want to add. So I'm going to be adding some green color to the soap. I just poured out half of the content of the bowl and just adding our green color to it. Firstly, to just test the color and see how it's going to turn out. And then I'm going to add some lemongrass essential oil as well as some peppermint essential oil. I got a bit distracted at this point and had added the essential oils before the aloe vera. It should actually be the other way around. Add your aloe vera at trace before you add your essential oils and fragrance oils. This is because the essential oils and especially fragrance oils can cause your soap to thicken really quickly after trace. So I had to work very fast because my soap mixture became very thick and I had to quickly spoon it into the mold. You can see here how thick the soap mixture is. So I'm working quickly and going to make sure there are no air bubbles in the soap by banging it a little bit onto the counter. And then I'm going to use my spoon just to make a little design on top to make it look pretty. It's now time for our soap to set. So we're going to leave it on a flat surface and come back in a couple of days to cut it. I was away from my workshop for two days. This is day three. I'm adding some water to my bowl in which I mix the soap. The soap is now hard and actually stuck to the bowl. So I'm just going to switch the water around to get the soap to mix with the water just to test the lathering quality of the soap. I can already tell that the lather from this soap is going to be a rich bubbly lather, making it a really nice and pleasant soap to use. It usually takes about 24 to 48 hours for your lye to neutralize in your soap. So it's not recommended that you touch your soap with your bare hands until the lye has neutralized in your soap. You need to wait 24 to 48 hours before you can touch your soap with your bare hands. Before then, if you want to touch your soap, maybe to feel how hard it is, you need to wear some gloves and make sure you're well protected before touching the soap. After 24 to 48 hours, your soap should be well saponified. That is, the caustic soda, the water, the oils should all be well mixed enough to have already formed the soap that leaves no more lye in your soap. If you have done the super fat option, which I've discussed in previous videos, and I will leave links in the description box down below, you will notice that your soap would already feel quite mild to the touch. So you can see here how beautiful and bubbly the lather is. I love it. It's time to unmold our aloe vera soap now. The soap is now hard, not too hard to cut since we've put in, like I said, the baobab oil softens the formula quite a bit. So it allows us to wait three days before cutting the soap. Certain soaps are very hard and you will need to cut them within 24 hours. However, this formula is not so hard and you can wait three days or even four days before cutting. You'll notice when I was first mixing the soap that I separated the colors. So I have some of the white, you know, mixed in with the green around the edges and that gives it a certain look. However, inside the soap, it's mainly the green color. So this white you're seeing is only outside and around the edges of the soap. I'm going ahead to cut the soaps first with my knife and then later on I'm going to do a crinkle cut version. So keep watching to see the different variations and different ways you can cut your soap. I usually cut my soap about two centimeters. That's the width and you can cut it as thin or as thick as you would like it. We have a lovely green color representing our aloe vera and of course the white around the edges gives it a little character. I'm cutting the first half of my log with my regular knife and then I'm going to cut the second half of the log with a crinkle cutter which I recently bought. I'm just slicing a thin bit off the end before I start cutting again so that it's uniform on both sides.
I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section down below and I'll be sure to answer them. See you in the next video.